We're waiting for the ruling of the appeal court where we do have that uh, the IMEC is praying for leave to configure the BVAS, that the BVAS was used for our elections. Well, let's start discussions for today now as the legal battle at Nigeria's presidential election has barely started and yet there are still arguments for and against the process. The Court of Appeal in Abuja is presently ruling in an application by the Independent National Electoral Commission, IMEC, seeking to vary the court's order for inspection of materials used for the conduct of the February 25 presidential election previously granted the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and Labour Party. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Albi, who is also in court for this, had opposed an appeal filed by IMEC to reconfigure the bimodal voter accreditation system Beavers used in the presidential election before deploying them for the March 11 governorship and state assembly polls. An appeal court, an appeal court on Friday had earlier granted the opposing parties leave to inspect all sensitive materials used by INEC for the February 25th presidential election. The court would also rule on the application brought by the All-Progressive Congress and the President-elect Balamet Tinubu for permission to carry out similar inspection of electoral materials used for the February 25th presidential post. Now, joining us to discuss all of this, we have Kingsley Chime, a legal practitioner, who joins us from Nigeria's commercial capital, Lagos, and Alistair Stoyode, a former chairman, Nigerians and diaspora organization, who joins us from the capital, Abuja. A warm welcome to you, gentlemen, and thanks for joining us in the conversation. Thank you, Thank you so much for having me. Now, I'd like to start with you, Alistair. What are your thoughts on INEC's motive to reset devices before their deployment for governorship, state house of assembly polls? Do you believe the reconfiguration of the BVAS is necessary for the smooth running of the March 11th governorship elections? Or do you go uh, the part of opposition parties who think uh, INEC wants to reconfigure, to tamper uh, with evidence? Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's like uh, going to a petrol station and to buy a foil. So number one thing that you have to take into account is that you need to see the meter reading zero, zero before you start uh, foiling your car. So it is in the same uh, method here, whereby INEC is seeking for them to be allowed to reconfigure the machine that is needed for the 11th March election. While, of course, before that time, the opposition party have already gone to court seeking permission for them to verify all the information that the Davis has recorded for the 25th February uh, uh, election in the country. Uh, there's no doubt that if the court allow INEC to tamper with it, it means that any evidence that is so sick by all the political parties, including the one that has been declared to be the winner, there won't be any record for that. And it wouldn't be right in that case for the court or for the court to judge on the case because there's no evidence. So my take really is based on what INEC is seeking for them to be permitted to reconfigure the beavers for them to be able to implement the 11 March election, Without that permission, it means that the election most likely will not be taking place because you need to configure all those machines. And we're talking about almost 170,000 polling units across the country that will be utilized on the 11th of March. Do any have the capacity between today and tomorrow uh, to be able to configure those machines? The answer is most likely no, because we're talking about technical machines here. It's not, it's not machine based on, in the cloud. It's mm. technical machine, and it mm. means that human beings have to go there and readjust them, unless if ANEC is telling us that they can do that remotely, and they can wipe out all the information that is there. So for me personally, looking at all these indices, there's a possibility that the election might not even take place, subject to what the court may end up ruling. If the court allowed them to temper or correct the information that is in the beavers is any guaranteeing that they can do that between a day mm. if then it's not possible then it means that the election cannot take place in the normal mm. sense of saying the election is credible is transparent which is one of the main issue of the 25th uh, 25th february so, Alistair, if sorry to um button staying with you if there were no legal challenges and uh, let's say the 
credibility of the election on the 25th of February was not questioned. Uh, what would be the normal scenario uh, with the BVAS uh, machines? Well, just like Anna have said, they control the system. So it's just like you have a computer or you have, a, as I said, you, you go to the petrol station, you want to follow your car and you have to make sure that the machine is written zero, zero. Hmm. The same way, if you remember, INEC and everybody is telling all the voters that when you go there, make sure that you can see the beavers and the numbers are zero, 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 meaning they have to start from a fresh number. So in this aspect as well, is the same way that the, my, the beavers have to be rebooted or, as INEC said, they have to reconfigure. But my question as well is, how soon can they reconfigure, bear in mind that today is Wednesday, it's okay. only Thursday, uh, the campaign finished tomorrow. And then Friday is the day that almost everybody is not allowed to move. And then Saturday is the day of the election. Okay. Well, uh, while there's this discrepancies on how long it's going to take INEC, that is, if they're granted leave to uh, reconfigure the, bigger, the Beavis machine, uh, some, I, some IT experts are saying that it wouldn't actually take a very long time. But we'll let the, expert, the IT experts to tell us more about mm -hmm. that. Now, uh, Barrister Kingsley, still looking at the proceedings, first of all, we saw uh, INEC, or rather the appeal court, granting the opposition parties, that is the People's Democratic Party, Labour Party, leave to have uh, access to the sensitive materials used. And then we saw INEC now varying these applications. We're waiting for the verdict. It's been on since 2 p.m. Looking at the processes so far, would you have expected that, uh, we want to understand the legal process, that the appeal court on INEC should have first of all granted uh, the request that has been granted by appeal court first before this proceedings? Because a lot of people were saying, if the opposing parties had been granted leave, then why weren't they given permission of the sensitive materials before INEC even gave their own appeal? Yes, thank you so much for having me. And um, let me also join the rest of the world to wish uh, women across the globe a uh, happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Um, have, having said that, I think um, uh, Nigeria is an interesting country for one to live in. You know, every day stories are developing. Uh, let me start uh, by putting out a caveat that um, I do not hold for either of the contestants. Um, what I'm going to say is actually my personal opinion of you based on um, the reports uh, coming in from um, different quarters. I also have to mention that um, I'm not privy to some of the documents filed in court, so I may not be able to speak authoritatively what the content of the papers are what the contestation of the grievances of parties are in order to make an informed opinion on the propriety and otherwise of the actions of either of the parties. Um, having said that, I think um, the application of the almost all the three major political parties that contested for the presidential election, they are, they are essentially seeking for one thing, to be granted permission to inspect the election materials, particularly the Beaver's machine, which was which was deployed during the election. And I think this is the first time Nigeria deployed this type of machine in the general election. It has been used in some few states. So this is um, the own application. And if one should look at it critically, uh, there have been issues arising from the outcome of this presidential election. There have been an issue of credibility at the race in several quarters people uh, feel that the, the, the votes of the masses never counted. And then um, the, the battle has now moved from the ballot to the judiciary. That is where the issue is, because the judiciary were never part of this election process. But uh, it appears that they may have the final say at the end of the day. Now, speaking on the application spending, which I believe the courts of a court of appeal is currently the living room. So I wouldn't want to preempt that, but I'll let me speak on what is before the court. On Friday, like you rightly pointed out, the court granted all the political, I mean, PDP and Labour Party, the leave, that is the permission to inspect the electoral materials. Of course, one would think that um, uh, the INEC, being an arbiter, should comply with the, with the order of the court. I don't think from Friday up to now that the INEC has complied with that order. And then they have come back to the same court to seek for another for leave. 
for them to reconfigure the same machine. You know, it doesn't really make sense, even from the elementary point of view, that the election being conducted is being challenged, and someone is saying it should be granted permission to reconfigure such a device deployed during the election. The implication of it is that the evidence of that presidential election may be lost or altered. That is the main question. And if that um, machine is not protected, or if the political parties that have been granted leave were not allowed to inspect those machines in order to have a direct evidence or, or, or recordings of those machines during the, that election, it will, it will be almost impossible for them to be able to push up a credible petition at the election petition tribunal. So what those political parties are asking for is quite simple. And I don't think the INEC should sacrifice justice at the altar of speed. They are saying that they need to configure this in order to conduct um, governorship election on Saturday. Mm. But that can be extended if need be. But we must get the process right. We must seem to have done the proper thing. And in order to give the judiciary the, the, the opportunity to see exactly what transpired on the 25th of February. Because as far as I'm concerned, some of the results that were eventually announced have been shrouded in secrecy. So the only way one could get direct information supplied in those machines is to inspect sale. So INEC is actually telling the court that they cannot obey the order of the court. The court had ordered it to uh, give them access to those machines. They have not complied. It's like someone who is in contempt of the court, coming mm. to court to now seek for, 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 for one relief or the other. You must first of all put yourself for that contempt. He who comes to equity must come with clean hands. So what we are saying essentially is that those political parties must be allowed to inspect those machines in order for them to prove um, the, the, those, some of the uh, challenges that um, we face during the presidential election. Now, INEC has gone to court um, to, to actually ask the court to alter, to vary those grants, to enable them to be configured. But, but, but the question is not whether or not the court can grant this power, but whether in the, in the circumstance, whether the court will be justified to allow uh, INEC to reconfigure those machines, it will actually make nonsense of the order of the, uh, the court had earlier granted, because it will no longer, that order cannot be obeyed. Court does not make an order in vain. If mm. court had made an order, whether rightly or wrongly, it must be obeyed. So I, I, I don't see, this is my personal view, I don't see uh, the court of appeal varying that order, especially where the INEC has not complied uh, substantially okay. in allowing those political parties to Thank you, it. Barrister <laughs> Chime. Uh, information just reaching us about 20 minutes ago, the uh, Court of Appeal ruled against INEX, uh, against uh, INEX decision uh, to, to, you know, to reconfigure the Beavers machine. So, uh, what's the implication uh, for this, uh, of this, Alistair? And uh, do you think INEC promised more than it could uh, deliver? Because this is a seismic uh, shift in the use of technology in our electoral process. Never have we uh, done this. Uh, what lessons uh, can we learn from this? Let's look at what the international observers observe in the Nigerian election. Let's look at what Nigerians observe in this 2023 election. So far, we haven't come across anybody rating this election to be the best that Nigeria as a nation has had over the years. Now, looking at the situation now that the court has denied INEC the right for them to reconfigure the Beavis machine, it means that the election on the 11th of March need to be reconsidered because without the Beavis machine, which is one of the main reasons why we're challenging, or other people are challenging this uh, election, would not be implemented. But again, let's put aside a little bit to say, well, the beavers that were used on the election day in 174,000 polling units, of course, not all the polling units received the beavers machine, and they were supposed to have a backup, so which means maybe every unit should have had two beavers machine. It means technically as well that INEC has not utilized all the number of Beavis machines that they say they have bought. Now, if there's a backup, 
to all this uh, Beavis machine, it means the election may likely be credible, be transparent on the 11th. And let's take into account as well that the population of those that voted in the 2023 election is roughly like 25 to 30% being generous. It means 70% of the Beavis machine, if available, were not utilized by INEC. Or at worst scenario, let's say 50% of this Beavis machine were utilized. It's mm -hmm. only INEC that can guarantee and tell the world how many Beavis machine did they actually use in the 2023 election. And of course, the major candidate all have one single request. Let's verify the report and the data in this Beavis machine. So the ball really is an INEX court. They have made a request and the court has denied them that right because they presume are going to destroy the evidence that has been seeked by the major political parties and the candidate. And rightly so in the world that we are today. Technology yeah. is driven by the people. So I see no reason why INEX should now contemplate destroying, if one wants to use that word, the Beavis machine that we use uh, in the 2023 election that the candidate and the winner, the loser and the middle loser and the middle winner is requesting that they want to verify this information. Mm. So well, let's take into account that this election for the 11th of uh, March for the governors and the rest may likely face some serious challenges and it's another thing that we have to face. It's just a day between today and, and the election day. Okay. Now, Barca Chime, I want your take on that because we have barely three days or four days to the election. And uh, this beaver is, in question, is still in question. So now that we have INEC been restrained, so to say, from uh, reconfiguring it, how do you think this might pose a threat to the elections? Are we still going to have the glitches or the hitches that we saw in the presidential election, because that was the reason for the reconfiguration, uh, so that they can have a smooth March 11 governorship election. What are we to expect by March 11? Will the Beavers machine walk? Will there be an excuse for the discrepancies we're seeing for the result? What exactly are Nigerians to expect? Well, I'm happy that the Court of Appeal has um, you know, denied this application. It is it's quite uh, commendable. It shows that the judiciary you know, uh, are feeling the impulse of the masses. Of course, they live in the same society as ours. So they, they also uh, understood some of these things. So it's actually a, a good one coming from the Court of Appeal. The implication of that is that the INEC must obey the order they are given by the court. These political parties will be allowed to inspect those machines and uh, make their own uh, findings. Because the essence of uh, those uh, other quarter is to ensure that the information supplied they are not auto, I mean doctored or erased, because that's what configuration is in the recent sense of it. Now, based on the, the decision of the court of appeal, I, I wouldn't know how prepared I make this, irrespective of uh, the reasons they may have given uh, why they, they must reconfigure these machines. If we are to go by their own uh, position, that uh, if they don't reconfigure it, it will be possible that uh, it will be possible to hold governorship election uh, on 11 on Saturday. But if that is going to be the case, um, I don't think uh, we still have time from now to 29 May to they can extend it to two weeks within which uh, the all those political parties will be able to get all the necessary information they want. Mm. So if INEC actually insists that without this configuration, the, 20, the, 20, the 11th uh, March election may not be then that may rightly be the position. Like I said, I do not know how prepared they are and whether the reason they have given to us yep. is something to go by. Can we actually handle a postponement of the March 11 governorship elections? I mean, uh, in Lagos State, we saw series of rather uh, stories of uh, markets being burnt down of Igbo traders. Uh, things are really tense at the moment. Can we handle a postponement of the election? Alistair. Yes, we can. Okay. It, it, okay. Yes, Barrister, go on. Okay, okay I, I say yes, we can. Of course, we, of course, the aftermath of uh, presidential election is actually what is affecting almost everybody. Of course, as well as the governors, this election is uh, yet to be conducted. So everybody is due to a lot of things that are happening within the last one week. So much has happened in the polity. So we don't, um, we are expected that something like this will happen, especially when the, the election, presidential election, everybody saw how how it went. So the, the expectation is everybody will up their games and try to 
outwit the other, whether rightly or wrongly. So we, we can always, um, Nigeria can always endure, we can always um, you know, get through it. But it's unfortunate that people have allowed the election process to generate into an ethnic war, because for the past one week, there has been a war between a, a, a one tribe or the other religion mm. and so on. This is uh, unless, totally unnecessary. But as far as I'm concerned, we have to get it right. Whatever it will take, we have to get it right. That is the foundation of democracy in every same country. Okay. Now, Alistair, INEC and the federal government are looking back at the way things were before uh, the elections and never missed an opportunity to reiterate how much of a game changer uh, this moved from manual to technologically driven elections were. And the Beavers were started as a game changer. Looking at last uh, two weeks' elections, the presidential elections, uh, there was positive news. Uh, the Beavers uh, did a credit and read the biometrics. It was 80% uh, success rate. Do you think INEC bit more than it could chew when it started the parts of, you know, transmitting results, the IREV? Because uh, they tested uh, this technology in the off-cycle elections and uh, the overwhelming verdict uh, was that INEC performed uh, below par. Going forward and looking at this weekend's elections, uh, do you think INEC has had enough time uh, to make amends and improve on the feedback from the presidential elections? Uh, Chime. Barrister Chime. Um, well, uh, unfortunately, I didn't get the question. I think you are asking about uh, whether INEC has made any improvement um, with respect to the vast machine uh, as against what um, happened on the 25th of February. Is yes. that the question? Yes, please. Okay, well, well, of course, after the election, INEC had told us that um, they experienced some glitches. Of course, nobody uh, told us what the extent of these glitches, what these glitches are. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a semantic gymnastic. A glitch can be anything, even network failure, human uh, network failure can be a glitch. So we don't know the extent of this glitch, uh, glitch to have affected the, the, the transmission of this uh, result electronically as required by law. And um, I also do not think they have been able to you know, assure Nigerians that whatever glitch that happened on 25th will not occur on the 11th of March if the election uh, is not postponed. So um, generally, apart from the glitches on uh, Beaver's machine, there has also issue of um, you know, voter uh, suppression, yeah. intimidation, ballot snatching, and so on and so forth. And more importantly, of course, nobody has actually pointed this out. The docility of the security agencies mm. is, is quite alarming. The, the security agencies are trying to be docile, you know, while all those uh, intimidation and suppression and electoral offenses are being perpetrated. In some instances, you even see policemen aiding those uh, people who, who perpetuate this injustice to the society. So I think the security agencies must also be a political. They must also do their work. They are not just there as masked wearing uniforms. Because I, I recall during that 25th of every election, I was an observer, and I called attention to some of the things happening in some polling units. In fact, in one of the polling units where I also voted, uh, there was a uh, issue of um, intimidation. But of course, eventually after that, police people came and they just went their way. They didn't even utter any word. Mm. They saw the people perpetuating this thing, but nothing happened. So the question is, what are these security agencies doing? Particularly the police. Because I understand the Nigeria Army, they are quite distant away from the polling booth and their, their engagement is quite minimal. But the police have that civic responsibility or just to maintain peace and order. Has that also been addressed? We are not just talking about because this beaver machine is still human beings that will operate them. You do have to yeah. be alive to operate those machines. Mm -hmm. So what happens at the end of the voting exercise and those machines or those um, INEC and box staff, we are not allowed to do their work. That is where the major issue is. And that is why you see that um, INEC decided whether um, on their own or out of network glitch reports not to transmit those results, in order to give time for whoever that wants to, you know, alter some results. So <laughs> the preparedness of the INEC must be holistic. It's not just about the, the, the status of the beaver's machine 
and all of that. But the entire by post uh, including security concerns also. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Barrister Chime, and also Alistair Shore Day for joining us in this conversation. We do appreciate your insights and contribution. Thank you.